following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Your war room for insider news and draft analysis from deep within the confines of Cowboys headquarters at the Star in Frisco. The Dallas Cowboys select Michael Parsons. And now, your hosts, Brian Broadus, Jeff Cavanaugh, Kyle Yeomans, and David Hellman. And just like that. We are back. Guys, I don't want to speak for everyone at this table, but if ever there was a year I thought the draft show might start later than usual, I thought it might be this one. Uh, But it is not the case. There are two seasons. There's football season and there's draft season, and draft season is underway. Welcome, everyone, to the draft show presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Guys, good to see you. It seems that one thing that we're really good at is this drafting thing. Yeah. No, <laughs> so we, maybe that's the consistent here. We you know, got that, that part down. Yeah, we got maybe the maybe that other side needs to work on their game a little bit more. Mm. So I'm I, I, excuse me, I'm rude. I just if you listen to the draft show, I just I think of you as like a longtime friend. I assume you know all of these voices. Just in case you're new here, I'm David Hellman. I will be quarterbacking this thing in 2022. That was Brian Broadus, a uh, longtime NFL personnel guy, Super Bowl winning scout. You know, back in the day with your height, we wouldn't have let you quarterback, I don't <laughs> that, think. No. Thank God for Kyler Murray. Thank God for he Kyler Murray. the modern day <laughs> NFL. He changed the game. That Thank is goodness. Kyle Yeomans coming on for your third? Third year. Third trip through the draft How process. About that? And he's quiet right now, but Jeffrey Cavanaugh is with us as well. Longtime radio draft, all around fun guy. What's up, Jeffrey? Just pondering, just thinking about who we're picking, just trying to figure you're it just all. Just right, you're just cut to the chase right now. I've adopted a new stance for broadcast. Yeah, that's what and they tell that you. Wide to do. stance. I learned it from Michael Irvin and Kurt Warner. They tell you when to I take watch up as NFL much network. of the table as you can. You got to yep. look yeah. like domineering. Yeah, like Eisen sitting there just doing this, mm-hmm. but then on the other side of the room, those dudes are spread out. So I feel like I'm I have a presence. There's a bit of tongue in cheek in that sometimes because that that is like Dave said that's what we're coached to do on the television side. There You're you supposed go. to I've got a stance kind of like this where it's like like one arm's kind of bent Just and I have it big. straight out this way. But there are other guys that will do the big it's like wide. somewhere Jer- somewhere Jerry Madelon is oh, so proud of what so Jeff's so doing right now. This. I yeah. am Jordan Davis. Yeah. I am taking up as much space as possible. Like, wow. You're looking, looking hard to block bear. right now. Just you are looking hard to block. Get big. I, well, okay, I'm re- you get, do you have a name? You got a name? Just don't even think about it. What do you mean, just pick, have a name? Pick 24. You got a name? Tyler Linderbaum. Tyler. All right. Oh, good. Sweet. That's, I, and I'm glad we're on the same page already. Done. I love... Picked. This time of year is always fun for me because, like... We don't know what we don't know, and and as we go, if you're new to this, you know you're you're gonna narrow it down. You're we're gonna get a much better idea of what we're all thinking about. But Tyler Linderbaum seems to be the early name. Like I, two years ago, oddly enough, it was Neville Gallimore was like one of the yeah. first guys we were talking about. We got on Leighton Vander Esch really really quickly. I'm interested to see how that evolves. But I like where your head's at to start things. Kobe out. Dean. There we go. Yeah, I think to me, we, how about us just jumping right in? Yeah, Both so, feet. yeah, we're already off the track of what I wanted to Derek talk Stingley. about in the first segment. I like He's what you did. I like what you, you can't take Derek Stingley. He's barely even played college football. Nobody could pick him with a top twenty-three See, pick. Yeah, just let him fall to twenty-four. Jeff, Jeff's on a, I support what Jeff's doing right now because he's trying to talk this into existence. Linderbaum's small. So is Nicobe Dean. I tell you what. You, yeah, you can't take any one of those guys. You know, and like I said, you know, Sauce Gardner at, at a Cincinnati clearly a better corner than Stingley is. Oh, I agree. Yeah, yeah no <laughs> doubt. Look on we, we should just get this out. Sauce of the way. is good, by the way. Get it I mean, out. Of way in the first episode throw out all of the 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 positives for these players and then the rest of the draft show yeah. just tear them down so yeah. that way if somebody picks up on it then they slip to 24 i mean we then we act excited about it yeah we'll just and we have look we have that power brian you know oh my god this what your ninth year yeah. doing this from the word go you've tanked some draft stocks just compare <laughs> oh just my gosh compare linderbaum to a bad center and we'll we're yeah. cooking with gas oh Let's he's go. very undersized <laughs> you know he doesn't handle pressure on very his nose. phil costa yeah exactly no I, I think to me yeah we got in trouble with bosa 
Yeah, you know, the Joey Bosa. Thing oh, that's that went, the one that I'll I compared him forever. to Greg Ellis. You know, and Greg Ellis was a damn good player. But I, I'll say this though about, like I say, the I appreciate the fact that people trust us along the way. You know, but I also encourage people. Our show is investigate and educate. Yes, sir. So that the first word is investigate. If you have the opportunity, however you can, to look at these players, go back. Go back. I mean, there's things you can, you know, there's ways you can find out how to at least watch these guys. You know, I mean, even on the YouTube stuff, I know it sounds crazy, but the way they do these games now, you can get tight shots of offense and defensive linemen to kind of, you know, get an idea of how at least they look and move and stuff. If you can't get the all 22, but yeah, I encourage. Don't don't. I mean, yeah, we you, you should listen to what we're saying, but also take the opportunity to to try and do your own work and maybe have your own opinion on this. It's more accessible than it's ever been. Absolutely. So we're gonna get into that. All right. If if you're new to this, we're here for an hour and we're gonna do this twice a week. So we got a lot of time. Thanks, Derek. To I appreciate talk, you yeah, that. appreciate yeah. that to talk about all these guys. But what I want to do first, we didn't have a mid season show. Right, and going back to the top of the show, I think that's probably because a lot of us thought we we wouldn't need to worry about the draft as early as mid January. Anyway, I would like to look back Cowboys twenty twenty one draft class. We don't necessarily have to like grade these picks. It's still only one year, but just revisit and tell me how do you feel about where things stand with what they did you know they went defense heavy obviously Micah Parsons kind of speaks for himself but just how do you feel about where that class is moving into its second year somewhere between okay and good um Parsons has obviously been incredible but outside of that I think early on you might have felt better about Oso Digizuwa than you did by the end. Like I think he showed that he can contribute and hopefully become a nice player, maybe a solid NFL starter. Uh, but most of the rest of that draft is kind of a wait and see. Micah Parsons has overachieved the 12th pick. He's overperformed, outperformed what I thought he could do. I had no idea he was the best edge rusher in football when I watched him at Penn State. Mm-hmm. The rest of this draft class is kind of wait and see. Quentin Bohana gave you a little bit. Golston gave you a little bit. Osa gave you some hope. Joseph gave you a little look. Uh, but I do think that a lot of this will be determined in the next year or two. It's hard to have a definitive opinion about a lot of the guys that they've picked. I'm worried about Nashawn Wright already. Are you? Yeah. Why? Probably my thoughts of him when he was picked combined with it was clear even in camp they put Kelvin Joseph on the side that was competing with somebody. They put Nashawn Wright on the side to watch Trayvon Diggs. When guys were getting banged up, there was never a question who was going in the game. It was Kelvin Joseph. It wasn't Nashawn Wright. And maybe you're going to lose the coach who wanted Nashawn Wright to begin with. So That's an interesting point. Yeah, there's... I believe this will look back at this draft class and will say Parsons is the best defensive player in football or one of them. And Osa, Golston, Joseph were at least hit-ish. And I'm still a big believer in Jabril Cox, who we didn't get to see. But I said when they picked him, I think Jabril Cox is going to play in Pro Bowls. And I believe that because that's the sort of player to me that translates to today's NFL. The great coverage linebacker who's acceptable in the run game, those guys can develop develop into something really good. But we haven't seen it yet. So my early reaction to this draft class is Parsons is awesome. (laughs) That's the reaction. Parsons is great. And I think that's the early part about this is you can't necessarily look at the draft class with a guy like Micah Parsons at the top of that and label it as a failure of a draft class. But you do feel disappointed with the way that picks 2 through 11 ended up turning out because they did have so many defensive heavy guys, but you can really count on one hand, and it doesn't take up the whole hand, how many guys made an impact. Nashawn Wright, the biggest impact he had was recovering a fumble on special teams throughout the season. He never got any starting snaps. And even Kelvin Joseph, he's a second-round pick. And I know that there was a crowded room at the cornerback spot and there was there was competition there, but you still expected him to really jump in there and at least be in the rotation. And it took until, what, week 12 through 17 to really see that finally happen? And it took injuries for that to happen. So I, I'm with you. I would say... I would say it's a good draft class based off of the fact that you have Micah Parsons, but moving forward, 
those guys are going to be under the micros- microscope and, and talking about even Jabril Cox because of the injury. How is he going to return? Can he get into the rotation, a linebacker, and then Chauncey Golston as well in the way that he didn't necessarily make a ton of impact, mostly due to injury. Yeah, I think Jeff's right. If if you saw everything that was going on with Parsons and rushing the passer and all that from that Penn State tape, you need to be a general manager of a team. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got some some incredible talent of evaluation there because again, you saw a guy that could blitz. You saw him on the the stunts and things like that. You knew he could close. You knew he had power. You knew he could run. All these things. You actually saw him, you know, I talked to a scout about him from another team. He said, listen, this guy plays on three levels. He could play as a rusher, he could play as a linebacker, and you can use him in coverage. Those are things, I mean, there's a lot of guys that just can only play on two levels. He plays on all three levels. So that in itself right there was a home run. You know, for a while there, Dan Quinn was treading water with his group, though. He didn't have, uh, you know, with Gallimore and, and guys like that. I mean, he really had to lean on some of these young guys, and it wasn't perfect. I, I'll, I'll say this, though. The, the disappointing thing to me was Joseph, but Quinn and his defense caught a break because their corners didn't let him down. Yeah. Brown played well enough. Lewis played well enough. And then Diggs, of course, you know, he he played well enough with the turnovers and stuff. So they didn't have to go with Joseph or Wright here. And so that they caught a little bit of a break there of not having to use those guys. I'm excited about Jabril Cox. I really am. I think he's going to take Leighton Vanderesh's spot. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't be surprised at this team. You were throwing out names of guys, you know. Dean, we talked about at Georgia. I mean, we're going to get into Devin Lloyd of Utah as another guy. I wouldn't be surprised if this team adds another linebacker to this mix. But overall, though, I think I was a little bit more disappointed with Golston in what he could have done. And I thought it was better. You know, he was very similar to like play the run, give you a little bit of a pass rush. Didn't see him do all that much. Bohanna, big guy, Kentucky, kind of thought he was going to be a run stopper in the middle. Didn't really do all that much. So I think overall, though, the defense, those guys plugged in and played. But the expectations were, I mean, that well, the uh, the results were really great with Parsons. Everybody else kind of gets a, hey, we'll see what happens to you next year. I think you all kind of touched on this, but this is what I think is so interesting. And I'm not so much concerned about, oh, so the 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 late round guys are Simi Fihoko, yeah. Quentin Bohanna, yeah. Israel Mukwamu, Matt Farniak. They all sort of bounced between doing nothing slash active, 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 yeah, active, active, yeah, active to not active yeah. to not be inactive. Exactly, yeah. all of those guys yeah. spend time on as healthy inactives. Yeah, I'm not so much worried about them. That's late day three. That that'll happen. But the names that I'm looking at are all the way through your fourth round picks. Other than Micah. All of these guys, you're like, yeah, like I, I, I kind of saw something. Flashes, yeah, flashes, yeah. And I'm just curious, and and I think this applies to everybody. So, Kelvin and and Nashawn Wright play a position that you desperately needed, and and guys are running out on their contracts. You know, Anthony Brown's entering the last year of his deal. Osa and Chauncey Golston, you can never have enough defensive lineman Jabril Cox y'all hit on that perfectly and then the other one Josh Ball who we we got nothing red shirt yeah, year zero the yeah. epitome of a red shirt year yeah. and I just wonder how do those guys weigh in your brain when you're trying to decide what this team needs right now like how you just said you think Jabril Cox and I agree is capable of starting mm-hmm does that affect your mindset toward linebacker in this draft? Same thing with, like, does having a Josh Ball on this no. roster matter? No, no, not at all. I mean, I, the one thing that I learned when I was in Green Bay with Ron Wolf was when you feel like you're strong at a position, go ahead and add another one. You know, that, that, that's, what met, that's what gets you real depth. This team, I know Jeff and I, we talk about it on our show, you know, every, every year in the spring about drafting the best available player. This team has found a way to like have players fall in their lap, and it's like, wow, we well they need a, uh, they need chase on defensive end, chase on, chase on, chase on. CD Lamb's the pick, you know. I mean, you know, that's the kind of stuff you know that you look at this team, and they've had a really good run of just drafting their board with the way it was, the way their stack was. So, yeah, I, I think at twenty one, you have to be open. Would you like to have another linebacker? Absolutely. Would you love to have another offensive tackle or a guard or a center? Absolutely. You know, I think there's. Would you like to have another wide receiver? Absolutely. 
You know, there, there's there you can you could be really open sitting where they're at right now, and and really bang this draft out and have a really good one that way. And it also goes back to kind of what you were talking about with it being those middle round picks, and even if there are expectations or the possibility of guys like Jabril Cox becoming a starter at linebacker, he's not a starter yet. So if you have an opportunity and a Nicobe Dean from Georgia finds a way down and he's there and you find a way to – he's the pick at right. 24. Then all of a sudden you've got competition there. If Jabril Cox still turns into a starting caliber Jabril Cox down the road – then you've got a surplus at the linebacker spot. So I completely agree. Yeah, the with only that guy, process. the only guy that, the only guy that showed that, like maybe you don't. We talk about linebackers, but Parsons. I mean, that's the one guy. Everybody else is still in that. If you drafted a guy, the draft, the draftable guy would be competing with a guy that you're still kind of waiting to see. So that's yeah. not keeping me from picking a. If if I draft a guy that's better than a guy I drafted last year, and he's and he proves he can play. By all means, play. The other guy, you become a backup. Well, and I would add this. I'm just one idiot with an opinion here, but if Jabril Cox entered training camp, you're like, oh my God, he's incredible. He's going to be a starting linebacker. And you drafted a first-round linebacker? I don't care. Yeah, I don't Because either. Micah Parsons showed me he's yeah. one of the best pass rushers in football. Yeah, I agree. Micah Parsons, in my world, is going to spend a lot of time lined up outside an offensive tackle going after the quarterback. Yeah. I need a linebacker whether Jabril and Parsons are your, quote, two linebackers or not. Yeah. I still need one. That would be a nice problem to have. Yeah. You touched on this, and then I'll put you on the spot because you can't really answer this question right now. I can answer any question. <laughs> Appreciate that. Do you see he my does stance? Five, yeah, he does five I can hours of radio a day. Yeah. He, he can any I can't you pitch got. either of y'all a question that you can't answer. You have to do this every day. Um how much does it concern you that the guy who created all this success for Micah Parsons is the hottest interview candidate in the NFL right now? Uh, a little bit. I think the defensive coordinator evaluation is really challenging. Like, I think you take whoever is the hot coordinator candidate any year and he's going to go get his head coaching job. And I say, oh, okay, so he had a really good defense. Like, sure. And he was responsible for that. Sure. Who were his best players? And then you just start ripping off names of really, really good players. Like, Brandon Staley was the hot name beforehand, right? Yeah, and it's right. like, who did he have? Oh, yeah, Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. And, like, Dan Quinn and the staff did a really good job of identifying that Micah Parsons could fill in at edge and be a badass. I think Dan Quinn did a good job of showing – that he has the adaptability required to be a good defensive coach, and I think he's a good teacher, and I think he's a good leader. But I think a lot of times our ideas of how impossible it is to replace a guy get skewed when if you've got really good players, a lot of times they'll get good results. Micah Parsons is going to play good football. Trayvon Diggs, when he has a chance to, is going to catch the football. Those things are going to happen. So I would rather have him than not have him. But I don't think most teams are going to be derailed by losing a coordinator. Yeah, I think the thing that Dan Quinn did that was really smart is he came in here with the ideas last year, the previous year before he got here, there were some things they did really well. And he didn't totally just scrap everything that they had done. And, you know, if Joe Witt gets this job as the defensive coordinator, and he's interviewing for jobs right now, yep. Seattle, the Giants, the Jets, I think he's on the path of, of doing those. But, you know, it, it, it's up to a defensive coordinator, whoever that is, whether it's one on staff or one that comes from the outside, for example, a Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer would sit down and look at your tape and say, wow, okay, he, he knows what it's like to play with Anthony Barr as a rush linebacker. So there's some things already built in. If you were interviewing defensive coordinators, it's like, well, who plays the scheme similar to what we want to do? Mike Zimmer does because he understands that. And that's the coordinator's job. It's Will's job to go shoulder and shoulder with Dan Quinn as he's going to State College, Pennsylvania, Lexington, Kentucky, and Corvallis, Oregon. You know, that's where Will has got to help. You know, he's got to go to all those places and make sure that the players that these coaches want that they can go get. And I think that's really the most important thing going forward as you work on these drafts. I was just kind of thinking on the the way that you outlined that, Jeff, in terms of 
easy to replace. Is it easier to replace a coordinator now that Dan Quinn has kind of unleashed the blueprint of how this defense could be successful? Because that's one of the reasons why he is the hot candidate right now. It's not just because he had a good defense, and sure, you've got the Parsons and the Diggs and the names that are going to rattle off, but it's the complete area of the turnaround that he pres- Real quick, presented. I think he's getting jobs because everybody in NFL knew that Dallas's defense could p- potentially be a train wreck. Exactly. Yeah. And he and he came in and, and not only changed the personnel like Jeff's talking about, but he also, he also used players. Like, coaches give you that lip of, well, we put players in position to make plays. No, Dan Quinn damn did that. You know, these coaches damn did that. Yep. You know, and so that's why all of a sudden if you're a general manager of a team that fired your guy, you're like, wait a minute. This guy could take my players, make them work in a scheme. Huh. That's an interesting idea. Novel maybe, concept. Maybe I should have this guy as my head coach. So, yeah, I think this is why there's nobody in the end. We were all, I know on Jeff and on show there on 105.3, you know, we were talking about it. If this defense could be just middle of the road, just middle of the road, you know, we're, it's like, you know, this offense will carry this, you know, if they could just be middle of the road. But yeah, they got enough players. They drafted some good guys, and you know the coach did a great job of, of, of putting that all together. And then the defense ended up being the identity toward the end of the season. I was about season. to say, let's not talk about the fact that the offense wound up yeah. letting them down. Look, this is, and I'm looking at the list of the 2021 class. It's it's remarkable the way Dan Quinn put his imprint on this. Yeah. I'll never forget being here last year when 6-4 corner after 6-4 corner just <laughs> kept getting talked about. Uh, so. It's, it's also a dangerous business. It is. It's, you let a coach pick players well, and the coach leaves. Mm, and that's my, I, it's, well, if the coach knows what he's doing. And, you know, the people you talk to in Atlanta, they were, like, thinking that Dan Quinn was a, a half a football away in the Super Bowl from still having a job. You yeah. know, there's people that say, hey, Dan works hard. He's got a good eye. But Atlanta has had some poor drafts along the oh, way. So there was, some scary, so there was some scary times there. And it's, yeah. well, it, it's just it's going to be interesting to see how whatever happens shapes this process. Because it will, whether – some by some miracle Dan returns or whoever winds up getting hired I think it's going to have a huge impact plenty of time to talk about that again we're going to take our first break and we got some questions to get to from y'all stay with us at AT AT&T everyone new and existing customers get our best deals on every smartphone why because you deserve it for turning your living room into your office and your gym for teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again it's the button on your left Nana okay your other left it's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with... And I'm Jay Novacek. And we're both with... United, United Ag and Turf. Turf. The official tractor provider of the Dallas Cowboys. So, if you need a tractor to bale some hay, a mower to cut some grass, or a gator to get some chores done... Get a John Deere at United Ag and Turf. And then, let's get to work. Hey, Jay, that's my line. (laughs) Well, not today. Get to work with a John Deere tractor package that's just right for you and your budget. Visit UnitedAgandTurf.com. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his un bending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him, it projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys, and Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. New Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. You deserve it. I do deserve that. You deserve decadent flavor without sugar and a day at the beach without sand getting everywhere and a relaxing bath that your children don't interrupt. I deserve all that? It's really just a visual metaphor for Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. Everything you want, nothing you don't. A visual metaphor on the radio. I do deserve that. Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. The zero you deserve is finally here. This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Welcome back to the Draft Show presented by Miller Lite. And this segment is presented by Liberty Tax. Liberty Tax is a proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Schedule an appointment today at LibertyTax.com slash Cowboys. And if you are a longtime listener, you know what this segment's really all about. And we're back to an hour format in the offseason, so we can call this... Twitter on the 20. I don't, Beam, I don't know if you got the drop right Twitter, 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 Twitter on the 20. Actually, I like Jeff's better, honestly. 
<laughs> and Dave tried to cut I you guys it. out of the show. We just, we, I fought for you guys. Dave was like, you know what? Maybe mm. let's not take questions from people. That's, and I said, let's keep them in. That's ridiculous. This has always Could been. Could you do that on your YouTube channel, deal. right? Yeah, you take YouTube, a lot of, my it, YouTube channel is. Takes where, all these questions. Yeah. And very fan friendly. I am determined. Jeff Cavanaugh, thank you. As the host this year, I am determined that we are actually going to answer more than one or two questions per Twitter on the 20th. Please. Good luck, dude. Is it's that because please. of good luck? I know. I Is tried that, that for right. two are years. You, are you directing that at me who talks I'm directing much. it at all of us. No. All right. Let's get into it. We're going to get to all of these, I hope. This one's from Tyndall Curtis. He points out Michael Gallup, Cedric Wilson are both free agents. On top of that, Malik Turner and Noah Brown as well. Wide receiver in the first round. You wanna? Can you buckle your? Can you buckle yourself to that wagon again in 2022? All day, every day. Wide receivers are fun. I love wide receivers. Yeah, I can take one all day, every day. Next, we go back next? to Team Forty Burger already. Jamison Williams. You uh, want some speed on this team? Let's I mean, go. I wasn't can, necessarily Forty Burgers this year. I can hear people rolling their eyes. What? Yeah. What, do you, what do you got? No, I'm absolutely. All, I'm okay with that. This game has turned into that. These guys working with these guys over at that radio station. They've they've told me that running the football is important, but also throwing the ball is important as well. And having these receivers, they make a huge difference. And yeah, and, and there's several of them. You mentioned Williams. The Burks kid at Arkansas is a really good player if you want a Debo Samuel kind of a guy. Mm, don't okay. say, oh, yeah, don't I mean, that that's what me. I'm saying. Mm, if don't if, say that if, to if me. people are using people are using wide receivers as weapons and using not only in the passing game, but if you put them in the backfield, there's studies about these guys and the way they run the football. It's almost like you're, it's a shock to the defense to see him back there and before they know it, the ball's seven yards up the field. So right off the top of my head, if if this is something that interests you, Jamison Williams at Alabama, uh, Garrett Wilson at Ohio State, Traylon Burks at Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, um, and I like Olave. Chris, Chris Olave at Chris Ohio Olave, State. Yeah. Drake then, London from USC. Drake yeah. London at USC. And then there's Dotson from Penn State are the ones I've seen so okay. far. And to me, I but think those are those are like the those are the guys that we're expecting to be the first round guys. I'll yes. be interested to see what happens with the medical on on Williams. I think that's something that maybe that puts him back a little bit to where he falls to you, like you're talking about. But he's a hell of a football player. Yeah, you better take him because if you don't, he's going to be a chief. Yeah. And then you're going to let, let him get to Kansas City or something. It's going to be Tyree Kill and Jamison Williams. Do yeah. you have something real quick? Yeah, I was going to say this year, I've I've always been on that wide receiver bandwagon. Even back to the CD Lamb, I ran a, a stupid half marathon for the dude. So I'm out this year in a first round wide receiver. And the reason why is because I'm not as impressed with this draft class as the draft classes the last three or four seasons in terms of that wide receiver position group. And I think that plays into the Cowboys' hands. In the later rounds, rounds two for, through seven, sign me up. Let's go get some wide receivers. But I think this actually plays out well the way that this thing is kind of turning out because there's not going to be those four or five guys going in the top 15 like we've seen the last couple of years. You're going to see a lot of those guys go from 15 to 32, mm-hmm. and then there's going to be a run in that second round. You think that's fair? I think it's fair. I mean, the, the ones I've seen so far, he's absolutely right. Because, again, Chris Olave, to me, is at Ohio State, is a hell of a football player. Yeah. Here's a guy, you talk about attention to detail. When he catches the ball, it's not get one foot down, it's get two. He knows he's about to play on Sundays, so that's the kind of player he is. But yeah, I think that that I don't think that we're going to see the receivers go at that top up, up in the top of the draft. So you're going to get an opportunity to pick the best one, I think. Russ notes, and this appears to be a first round that is stacked with offensive tackles. At 24, he wants to know: Have you seen any that you think have guard flexibility? And I know we're early, so if you haven't seen that much tape, that's fine. I'm just curious. I've I got think, a guy. No, I think that to me with the tackles, I, the ones, the top ones I've got, and this is the way I have it. I have it cross from Mississippi State, Iquan Wu from North Carolina State, and then I have Neil from Alabama as my third. All first-round wow. guys. Neil he, third? He yeah. He hates Alabama. <laughs> no, I, I, I a lot really, of guys have him as a top five potential. I've seen I, him I, as the number one number overall. One. Yeah. He could go number one. I, I'll tell you why, because there's times when you watch him, there's, a, there's some one-shot blocker to his game. Now, the one shot's pretty good, but overall sustained for a man that big, I think there's, you know, it, it, to me, there's. I'm, I'm more likely to pick a guy. I think that's a better athlete right now. Be, they could get second level stuff. They can backside scoops and things. Neil's outstanding. He's 357 pounds. Don't get me wrong. I got him as a first round tackle. But yeah. Cross, Aquanwu, better athletes. Now, you know, like Penning, you know, 
uh, Falele from uh, from uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. That's another mammoth man. Uh, you know, I, I don't really see if you want to put one of those guys. I don't see pinning. You know, Northern Iowa as a guard. I think if you want a guard, you just straight draft one. And, are, you and the, that, are you okay with a guard who could play tackle? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, so you that's green. That's who was, green. Who was your guy? So I was thinking either Kenyon Green yeah. or, but my guy that I'm thinking about is Darian Kennard from Kentucky. He played yeah. tackle at Kentucky, but yeah. he translates as a guard. Yeah. He's but he right was tackle. A fantastic run blocker at Kentucky as a tackle. And I was thinking Kenyon Green, Texas Which, A&M, yeah. well, who those played guys left guard, right guard, left tackle, and right tackle well, all this year. But I think he's an NFL guard, yeah. but he's held up just fine at the, right tackle and left tackle. The only thing with Green is I don't know, and I, this is still super early on, but I don't know if he's going to be even where, anywhere close to 24. I think he's Oh, like go he may the, go early? I think he goes in the only top 15. The only problem with that game is we'll apply it. And we'll apply. He's going top fifteen to twenty five guys. Actually, because I did it to CD. No, it's true. I did it to CD. Yeah. It was like people would send me mock drafts. I'd be like, "You took CD Lamb. You should have rebooted the simulator." Yeah, and yeah. Like it's we're going to do it with Kenyon Green. We're going to do it with Linderbaum, Nicobe yep. Dean, Devin Lloyd, yeah. and just of those four names, I bet you one makes it. I'm but really I'm, be like, yeah. I'm pumped that you said that. Wait, you have something real quick? Yeah. Have you taken a look at Zion Johnson from Boston College? I have. Uh, yes, I have. Okay. See, I have Johnson over uh, Kennard. Really? Uh, yeah, I do. Now I have, I have both them in second. Second round, actually, they're touching tags. They both have early yeah. second round. Grades See, I think moment. Green's clearly a first round guy because I think the flexibility part. I think I think Zion Johnson from Boston College could play both too. Is he strong enough to play tackle? Sure, he is. Because I wasn't super impressed. Sure, with the he first is. Punch. Yeah. Getting excited. Yeah, My I mean, I think I think I mean there, there are guys like you watch him. I thought he was going to come out last year. Yeah, I did him. I did him last year thinking he was going to come out and he didn't. And I was like going, okay, this ought to. But. To me, still the first question, Dave. No, no this it's is the, the second. second one. Okay, <laughs> my fault. Yeah, okay. I tried to get into the I'm, third. I'm, I'm out. I'm, I'm, I just wanted to ask. I tried to get into the I third. I just wanted to ask. No, if that's you watched fair. Because I wanted no. to see where I wanted to see. Next week too. Yeah, I wanted to see where he had Kennard in the relation reason, to Johnson. The reason we do this show is so that I can hear you talk about some guy by his last name, wondering if he's strong enough. Like yeah. that's what I'm here yeah. for. Yeah. Jerry, though, and I think this is a good point. Uh, he mentions he's he literally he specifically said yourself as the GM. Jerry. Oh, st- stop it. Oh. D- we're not going there. <laughs> Sorry. It's he Jerry wants with the G. <laughs> he brings up Creed Humphrey. <laughs> Left-handed center. Second round well, last year, yeah. Second round Fantastic. pick. Yeah. Pick 63. Yeah. Played at an all-pro level for the Chiefs. Yeah. Guys missed him there. He wants to know if you can spot a difference between him and Linderbaum. And, and the point of his question is basically... There's a lot of sentiment that says, there's no way the Iowa center falls to 24. There's no way. There's no way. Sure and there is. history indicates that that is very possible. He's a 292-pound center, by the way, your Linda Baum. And yeah. he's also, what, 6'2-something? Like, yeah. So he's not so going to be a big size. guy. See, yeah. Not a big guy. You talk about the best players. We talk about the Georgia linebacker. What's his? What's his? Six foot two twenty five. There you go. Yeah. Linda Baum, he's 292 pounds. See, people will look at that. Old, crusty guys like me will go, oh, God, can't take that guy. Not big enough. You know, that's what happens in what this day think? and age. What do you think? Oh, no, I crusty. love them both. Yeah. I love them both. I mean, again, I'm telling you, I like the athletic offensive lineman. Mm-hmm. Look what you had. Look how much better your team was when you had a guy like, uh, you know, and with Travis Frederick. The ability to cut the defense in half, the ability to get to the second level. What happened a lot of. Bianish got better as the year wore on. But there were times where they just could not get somebody up or they could not get somebody wide enough to hook guys. Just to play devil's advocate, because I know somebody's going to bring this up throughout the process, but Travis Frederick, if you're comparing the two, I know you're not, but if you're looking at Tyler, Tyler Linderbaum, 6'3", 290, and then you've got Travis Frederick, who was 6'5", pushing 3'10", I mean, they're bigger player it was, is Travis Frederick? Was, Tra- the one that was, Tra- was Travis six five? I don't think he was six. There's five. no way. I'm, I've been around sure Travis a lot. Five. Well, maybe he was taller than me, but if he wasn't, I mean, I feel he like was really he was inches. really square. But dude. see, that's the thing he about he was a big guy. Okay, coming out of now, maybe six foot four. Sorry, maybe this is wrong about because yeah. I went back and looked at my Creed Humphrey notes. He's six four three twenty eight. Yeah, that's a little different, right? Oh, yeah, that's, that's a very, it, it, it's that, very different. different. That's a, and, and but you talk about a guy that was really, really light on his feet. Yeah, he's he's the best center athlete I think ever measured. Yeah, if you use wow. like the combine numbers, it's crazy. You know, and, and you wonder why. Okay, so why did Humphrey fall to sixty? Because scouts got freaked out. He snaps left handed. That's no. That's I'm just. I'm, I threw uh, that I'm out. literally just, like. <laughs> my well, and his tape was like uh, honestly to me because his tape was good and yeah. he was a phenomenal athlete and. He got better. Like, Tyler Linderbaum has better tape than Creed Humphrey ever put on at Oklahoma. I agree. Yeah. Way better. 
He's his tape is the best center tape I've ever seen. Hmm. Uh, Tyler Linderbaum's a stud. Yeah. There's not a block he can't make. There's not a reach block he can't reach. There's not an assignment he's going to miss. There's not a stunt that's going to fool him. There's not a second level block he's going to miss. Your only question is going to be if he lines up against Jaron Reed, will he get pushed around? That like, that's going to be your only question because everything else that and seems that's, but that's important. And that's also <laughs> part of going from college to the NFL. Yeah, dudes get bigger, transition. dudes get stronger. Yeah. Tyler Linderbaum's a stud. If he's at 24, I don't need to know who else is there. So for the next four months, you're not allowed to talk good about Tyler Linderbaum at all. Because Deal. now I'm upset. Now I'm yeah, sad. Well, he's not putting it out there. If he's there, it. I don't care who else is there. I agree. There's not another name that matters. He's at all? No. Yeah, to not, me, not that's even the a pick. little bit. Did you did you wow. feel did okay, then I know what you're saying because what if Green was available to draft a guard? Linderbaum. Oh, I was yeah, thinking he I was thinking he was gonna say, I'll play with Bionish if I had Green Which, at guard. No, I'll put Lyle at left guard and I'll move on with my day. So you have Linderbaum as your one. Okay, let me ask IOL. you this. He's Green, my number one. Well, ask a question. I'm no, no, sorry. No, no, I don't, no, I don't, no. I'm not the one that should be asking questions. I'm, the no, fans ask I'm enjoying, questions. I'm enjoying this. What were you no, going to no, say? No, 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 no. Go ahead, please. Wow. No, no. I feel please. like we were headed for a great debate because what no, I was no. about to say. This is what you do whenever you put that president in the early That's why the, the show segment. needs to be two yeah. hours is the That's, problem. Well, we, we've forever got two, we've done. We've got two shows. It needs to be two hours. Do you? does, too. I love talking draft. Do you think, like. The show needs to be nine hours. I guess the point I was trying to make is. Especially Tyler, with the players. It was on day two and day three. Calm down. Everybody <laughs> calm the hell down. Was Tyler Biotish as big of a weak link as all of the focus on Linderbaum seems to suggest that he was? Because that's – that. like I said, the prevailing sentiment right now is like we got to get this damn center. I, I think it's almost an impossible question because I think everybody that plays offensive line on this team over the course of the season and especially the last two or three months didn't play as good as they are individually. Zach Martin got beat at times where Zach Martin's not supposed to get beat. Tyron yeah. Smith got beat at times where he's not supposed to get beat. Lyle Collins, everybody. I think if you went through the loss in the playoffs, I think Biotish probably had the cleanest game of everybody on the line. But... Your offensive line let you down, and if you have a chance to upgrade with a really, really good player, you upgrade. So, like, do I think it's an emergency and you have to replace Tyler Biotish? No. But if I have an opportunity to get better at a at a position group that let me down, I'm doing it. Well, let me ask this, just to kind of piggyback on it. But if Williams is not available, let's pretend he's not even a part of this roster. Moving yeah. forward, do you I, feel like... I, I think that's pretty plausible. That's yeah. what I'm saying. If if that is the case, do you feel comfortable at the guard spot moving into the season with options like you can maybe move Lyle Collins over there if See, you that's give him a full off season, do. put him at left guard, and then you would go and get a center, or you could go sign a, a veteran guard. Can I change the line the coach while we're at it? Hey, 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 sir. Just asking. No, agree. I mean, that's all. Just I mean, there, I mean, if that's the case, your, your your offensive line might look remarkably different if you do if you make that change. I'm not I'm not advocating that. I guess I just did, but you know, the <laughs> yeah, th- kind of did. Okay, but you I'm just and say- I aren't cowboy employees. Like there may be times where they okay. have to step lightly. We'll I went, just let it rip. I went and back, see if we get fired. I went back. <laughs> I went. I went back and looked at my title. Welcome back to the draft show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just somebody else Dave. is replacing yeah. Jeff Kavanaugh. Yeah. <laughs> These guys were tampering. Uh. You know, see, the thing about it with Tyler Biotis, I went back and looked at my notes, and I think, does it play with much strength or power? Too many snaps where he gets rocked back, stalemated along the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen that. You yeah. know, his head goes down, he gets in trouble. He can, you know, he looks like he can see things and all that, communicate and all that. When he blocks on an angle, the shield and stuff, that's all good, but he doesn't get movement one on one. And that's the thing about it. I mean, there's things you saw at Wisconsin. That are carried over to today, you know. And so, if there's concern about Lindenbaum being maybe not strong enough with a guy directly on his nose, then you know those are concerns. You have to see it though first. You have to pull. Him, give me that Minnesota game, or give me that uh, you know, give me one of those games where he's playing against somebody big and they're just manhandling him. If that's the case, then I think you'll have to adjust your thoughts. I've got a really great question about the Eagles, but I feel like we could do a whole segment on it, so I'm going to save Hell, it. Hell, I've always liked Don Henley. Birds aren't real. <laughs> nice reference. Thank you. Uh, all right, real one quick one. Quick one from Drew before we had to break. We got three in, didn't we? No, that we this will be the fourth. Okay, go ahead. This I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Running back. 
Mm. He wants to know if it's a top 100 need in 2022. Nah. No. It'd be a luxury, but if they picked one that they really liked, I guess it's fine. But Pollard's going to be on the roster. Zeke's going to be on the roster. And, and this be... team, in this building, these guys, 21's getting the ball even though he shouldn't. You've already got a running back who can't get the ball who's better than your starter. What are you going to do with the third one? Get ready for Pollard's departure? Yeah, That's not I, a top 100 need. I think that's why you do it if you do it is thinking Tony Pollard. Yeah, this you should be, be working on year. a departure for the other one. I've, I've, that, I've that's looked, a lot easier said. I've than looked done. at yeah, one right. running back, and it was Kenneth Walker from Michigan State. It doesn't seem like he's, a very good running back. It's class. not. He's, he's not, not he, at the top. I, I'm in the second round. He's a he's a good player, but I, I, he's not a first round. Player. I think there's there's more depth to this running back class than there is that top heavy prospect mm-hmm. pool, which is actually going to work out because I don't think you should take a, a running back in the top 100 in that regard. Or but there's going to be some decent, yeah, or ever. But oh. there's going to be some decent guys later. You in take the it. Draft as you well. take it too far. You take it like. It's, Imagine doing radio with him. It's every day. worth it as a top one hunt. Maybe not the first round, but like if a great running back is there, starting around pick sixty, I'm getting interested. You get so another you're question. Only, you're only hedging his one hundred by forty picks. Uh, the Titans did a lot. I'm surprised you went with a running back Deontay, question. Deontay Why? Foreman. I'm surprised. But well, the other one would take twenty minutes. Oh, I am. I'm fascinated by the idea. The Eagles were good enough to make the playoffs, and they had running the ball. <laughs> Why? Why you? Why you gotta cut me off like that? No, I said running the ball. <laughs> yeah. I just said it, right? Yeah. If you run your quarterback fifteen times a game, yeah. if that's the way you want to play, you we don't, don't have a chance to win games. We don't have time to do it. But Tim, we are. We're going to take your question eventually. The Eagles were good enough to make the playoffs, and they have three first round picks. Right. As a divisional rival, I think that's worth getting into. But oh no, absolutely. We'll have to save it because oh. we did. We are over, so we will head to break. We could make it's your the fault, Dave. So you can't host the over. show very well. We could make the Eagles. So we got good. we got like four. We got four. I, used to, five I, tri- I tried one year, Jeff. I we tried got, to make the Eagles. We good. got five questions, and I feel good about that for the first show of the year. Good job. We'll be right back after this. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call. And teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with... And I'm Jay Novacek. And we're both with... United United Ag and Turf. Turf. The official tractor provider of the Dallas Cowboys. So, if you need a tractor to bale some hay, a mower to cut some grass, or a gator to get some chores done... Get a John Deere at United Ag and Turf. And then, let's get to work. Hey, Jay, that's my line. (laughs) Well, not today. Get to work with a John Deere tractor package that's just right for you and your budget. Visit UnitedAgandTurf.com. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at Stetson.com slash cowboys. This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Welcome back to the final segment of the first show of the year. Brian, you're going to appreciate this a lot. Did you know you can invite Rowdy to your next event? Really? Yeah, you can. From birthday parties to corporate events and special deliveries, Rowdy brings games, entertainment, and photo opportunities to all occasions. 
Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Rowdy to book your appearance. Can we? I used to know the old Rowdy, and he might show really? up at a club for you. I, th- I think we need to book Rowdy for a crawfish boil or something this year. That just to have hilarious. him come hang I out I would with love us. to see Rowdy try and peel crawfish with yeah. his Rowdy hands on. Rowdy tossing back some Miller lights in Jeff's backyard. Mm. Let's go. <laughs> Rowdy, push him into the pool. Also, that would be bad for Rowdy. Rowdy on the flamingo just floating around. <laughs> That's funny. You guys would have abused Rowdy. <laughs> Abuse? No. Yeah, he's got no, body armor. Time. He's, he's fine, time. right? All right, first segment, and <laughs> Rowdy's a good dude. <laughs> thank you for all your questions. A lot of them, understandably, were about what I want this segment to be about. So if that's why I that that might be why I ignored your question, and I apologize. But so we look back at this past draft class and kind of how we feel about that, and we've touched on this a little bit, Kyle. You more than everyone else about how you're feeling philosophically about this first round and this roster. And I just want to go around. I'm gonna maybe put y'all on the spot. You can't. You can't repeat answers. Mm-hmm. So, in the interest of entertainment, the number one thing that you want to address with pick 24 uh, is what? And Kyle, I'll start with you. Yeah, it's the offensive line for me, and that's. It's partly because of the need, but it's also because of the prospects that could potentially be there for you as well. In the way that this draft class kind of works in your favor. It goes back to what Brian even said in the first segment. Last couple of years, best player available has come to you, but it's also been in a position where you could utilize it. And I think that's the best chance that we're going to see that kind of line up together and all the stars align is if a Linderbaum and a Green fell to you in the first round. I think that's the ideal scenario. And even if they don't, you're fine picking offensive line in the second and the third rounds there as well because there's going to be guys there like a Zion Johnson maybe if he falls to Mm -hmm. the mid-50s or a Leviticus Smith or a Jeremy Slayer Smith from Virginia Tech and and Slayer from from Georgia. There are guys that are going to be good players in day two that even if you wanted to go away from offensive line in day one, I'm okay with that, but I still think it's the number one priority moving forward. I think almost everyone would agree with that based on the way the season ended. Yeah. Well, I mean, what? He's a cheater. He took the good answer. That's, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll, I, I, I was it's messed I, up. Hit me. Wait, you got something else? I just watched San Francisco not score an offensive touchdown and win a playoff game. Yeah, if that's the way you want to try to do it, it ain't going to work very often. Uh, I'm just telling you, though, I've seen them. San Francisco has found a way with their front to control games on defense that you need to get better. I mean, your pass rush is fine. But, you know, let's be honest, Neville Gallimore wasn't good enough. We mm-hmm. talked about Bohanna. We talked about what's happening at defensive tackle here. If somehow, some way, you can address what's going on with your defensive line. You know, San Francisco is one of the worst pass defenses in the league. They held Aaron Rodgers to 225 yards. You could say it was five degrees or whatever. I don't care. But you went, this team, the last two playoff games, have controlled the Cowboys and the Packers with defensive line. Don't tell me your front doesn't matter here, you know. And if depending on what happens with Randy Gregory, depending on what happens with Tank Lawrence and that contract, you know, this team's up against it in a couple of different ways. You might be forced to be to address your defensive line at twenty four. So, other than Hutchinson and Thibodeau, who just the Cowboys have no chance of drafting, we don't really need to even talk about it. Uh, how do you do that at 24? George Karloftis. Purdue. Car- Karloftis. If he's there, which he okay. may yeah. not be, but. You know, I, I'll be interested to see what happens with Lyle from the uh, from Texas A&M. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> not a fan? Not My a bad. fan? Well, not if, a fan? If, let me do me a favor. If you're going to make that sound, let's hear a report. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. DeMarvin Leal, Texas A&M. Uh, I have him as like a second-round defensive tackle because wow. he has the physical traits to be a really, really good player. To me, on tape, he's never put it together. I watched, I believe it was Cross. I believe I watched the Mississippi State game, and DeMarvin Leal never, ever on any snap made Charles Cross uncomfortable in any way, shape, or form. Is he a quick guy that can play defensive tackle? Yes. Will he flash the ability to make plays in the backfield? Yes. Does he flash the ability to be a power player at the line of scrimmage? Yes. Does he do any of those things consistently? No. So DeMarvin Leal, to me, is a – that's probably about right, late first-round pick, Mm -hmm. where somebody's taking a swing on what they think he can be. I want to be able to trust 
by first round pick that who, I've seen him do it. Who's your top interior defensive lineman then? Jordan Davis, but he's a two down player. Yeah. So that's hard. That's and that's I mean, that's gonna be a guy that people keep going back to just because he's so unique. Jordan Davis out of Georgia. I'm very confident you know who we're talking about. Yeah. Well, see, that's what I'm six, saying, six, though. I mean, you, you look at these teams, and we talk about you got to defend the run, you got to defend the run. It's not the case anymore. You know, teams throw the football. You know, I mean, well, you're sitting here talking about the 49ers. You do have to defend the run. They rush the passer. Yeah, they run the the, hell out of the ball. The the 49ers, the 49ers in the game against you had they lost their best player and still put you in peril. They got better after they lost their best player. Honestly, come on, man. So it doesn't matter. Get ends, get tackles, address the defensive line. You're you're going to be in some trouble here. So you're just saying the front in general. I'm saying the front, yeah, because you 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 don't know what's going to happen. Like I say, if teams are going to throw the ball, what's the one thing that this team did a good job of? Rushing the passer. Yeah. You know, that was the one thing. You know why they rushed the passer so well? Because they got leads. Now, maybe it is about helping the guard and the tackles and the stuff like that. If you want to talk about the commonalities of the teams left right now. Uh, and this probably is going to help somebody like DeMarvin Leal, who's a 280 90, to 90, 90 pound, pound defensive guy. tackle. Uh, gosh, when I think about what they have in common, Eric Armstead is a penetrating monster on yeah. the interior. Aaron Donald is maybe the best player in football. Chris Jones is one of the best pass rushers in football from the interior. If you find you somebody on the interior that can pass rush, that seems to work out. Well, and what's the most disruptive type of pressure to a quarterback? It's middle. The, the middle, middle pressure. But just in general, and again, I mean, we'll get... I'm just being different from the answer no, no, he no, gave. I, know, I mean, I if you want to think about <laughs> no, it, I mean... No, but I think this, I appreciate is, I think this is worthwhile. But just from the preliminary research that I've done, you know, like going back a couple drafts, like Derek Brown and Javon Kinlaw aren't in this draft class, or am I wrong? I don't no, think they are. They're not. Yeah. You're not. Jeffrey Simmons isn't in this draft no. class. Man, those guys are not. good. I don't think they are. Well, then, you know, what you could do, you, okay, then what I should have said then is any player on defense, linebacker. Okay. Listen, there's a couple of safeties in this draft. I don't I know how like many safeties safety you've looked at, but there's a you know there's Dave, a couple you're of the quarterback. You can't let him pick the whole give defense. Me, give me Kyle Hamilton. That's, that's true. What you am are I going to do? Which, yeah, that's a great point. Thank you. I'm pick wide receiver. <laughs> that's <laughs> well, it would be all that's left. No, a, a, that's where you go though. I'm, I'm I'm not like making fun. I'm curious. No, if he didn't get to take every defensive position, um, if you're talking yeah, about Ryan, I, I wasn't trying to take every defensive position. I said defensive line. If if he's sticking with defensive, you just say. Defensive tackle for the sake of okay. giving you some choices. Give me the exact framing of the question again. What do you think is this team's biggest need? And we're just going to say, okay. assuming, you know, just you take offensive line. You can't so say offensive line or necess- defensive tackle. This doesn't mean that I want to pick it at 24, but if you want to know this team's biggest need, it's safety. <laughs> this team, really? This team, like right now in the safety room? It's Donovan Wilson on a stool spinning circles. Well, that's who's in the room. That is He's by himself truth. looking around. Where did everybody go? That's, Curse is up. KZ's up. Hooker's I mean, up. Hooker's up. And that's, on. I mean, that's the tricky part about you starting this show in January. One of those guys will be back, right? One Depends those, on if you're maybe. defensive coordinator. You listen to back. Stephen Jones on our show? I don't remember. What well, did he, he say? said they'll keep their own guys. They just won't sign anybody else's. That's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, they're not going to be big spenders, but like Malik Hooker, you don't have to spend a ton of money to get Malik Hooker back here. Good or bad Malik Hooker? I thought he was pretty good this year. I, mean, I thought he got better too. He wasn't. He uh, he he wasn't an every down starter. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad. I was. I agree with you guys. I, I just he, asked the question in a way I didn't think. I mean, I didn't think anybody else would say he's any good. I think most people would probably say, and that sounds weird because nobody took his job. But I think most people would probably prioritize Hooker over Casey. I would. I think most people. They started think. playing him more yeah. after the DUI thing. Well, and also yeah. Casey doesn't want to step up and hit anybody either. He'll throw his body around a little bit. I saw him kind of get run over a couple times. A couple times. <laughs> he's a smaller guy. Over. I mean, he's a corner playing he safety. Was, he was timid. Yeah. He would take. Go, it, he would want to go get a real brakes. safety. Go get Dax Hill from uh, from uh, Michigan. That I mean, sounds wanted, fun. Yeah, guy could play in the slot. Some of Javon some Brisker from Penn State. I, I, there's there's somebody there. Some Twitter it's folks made guy. the point though. Senior but, bowl guy. But he but here they they would have to do that for me to believe it would happen. That's why it I'm, goes all the way back to that. That's a deep rooted thing for I'm, you, right? That's why I needed it the is. question, the phrasing yeah. of the question, because if it's biggest need to me, the real answer with every position available is safety. But is it likely they're going to address that with a high pick in the draft? Probably not. Is, that's their biggest need today. So 
Kyle Hamilton at Notre Dame is the unquestioned safety boss of this class. Yeah, he's he's gone way before. No, that's no. I was going to say he's he's out of here. Yeah. So in our range, if he was he, there over Linderbaum, would you take Linderbaum still? I did say it doesn't matter, but that's because I assumed. Hamilton See, to go mm, sure, but yes. when you assume, I'll take Hamilton. I just want to <laughs> throw it out there. I will also take Aiden Hutchinson if he makes it to twenty-four. <laughs> who's our Who's our Penn State guy? Jaquan Brister. Brister. Jaquan Brister. Brisker. Brisker. I'm sorry. Like like I'll the T. Like brisk T or well, actually like brisket with an R. You watch Catalan yet from Arkansas? Is he coming out? He's not. I don't he's not think coming he's coming out. out. So. Okay, well then that's one of the ones yeah. that I. Yeah. He's a good player. I had him in high school. Wasted your time, didn't you? Studying damn it. the whole damn tape. Catalan's a good player from Arkansas, he by the way. Good player. I had him over Brisker, by the way. That's why I asked. I he, did that with Olave last he'd probably year. I studied be, him, and then he didn't come out. <laughs> he'd probably be like Dane a Dane provided a list to me, round, and I'm like, yeah. I, no, I had him in the second round. I had Brisker in the second round, too. Oh, that's, that's, that's where I have him. All I've been doing for the last week is going through different people's like top 150 and being like, mm-hmm. okay, what's what's this guy's story? How do you yeah. pronounce this guy's name? Yeah. So, But say, like... And again, I guess it's hard to project, but like I assume one of those guys will be back in the building, preferably both. I don't know. What do you think J. Ron Curse will be worth in two months? He played really well. There's two guys that have now remade themselves. Yeah. Him. Curse going to have a market. Yep. He now proved he can cover. We didn't believe he can cover coming out of Clemson. We thought he was a bum. <laughs> and I thought he didn't try hard and didn't like football yeah, coming out of Clemson. He so. loves football and he can cover. We were wrong about him. The guy you're tied in also is going to make money. Oh Shreds. yeah, yeah. He's gonna make money. Somebody on I I didn't I did not propose that on Twitter and on the twenty for that very reason. Uh, Weidermeyer. Somebody named Drip Wheeler hmm. said uh, it's like a stock car driver. <laughs> That's because that would be Rip Wheeler in Days of Thunder, I believe. Oh, Is nice. that Rusty Wheeler? Nice. <laughs> I think it's Rusty Wheeler. How big rusty. How big of a need do you see a tight end? Eh. You know, Dalton Schultz. I don't fourth round Stanford. Schultz is Jarwin, it, Jarwin, Jarwin is Schultz. Yes, that Hewan's yeah, fine. Yeah. Sprinkle, whatever. Yeah. You think Give me a just big I've, I've seen tight one. End. I've seen one. Weidemeyer's the only one I've watched, and he. I tell you what, he's he's a really good player. But I mean, it, you're you know you're probably not going to pick a tight end in the first round. Bring in Gronk. Okay, I, I want a blocking tight end. If I'm going to go draft a guy, and is there Peter a blocking Meyer tight end? Both. <laughs> is, is that there? a thing? Dra- you know what? Jake, I, I, Jake I, Ferguson from Wisconsin. Okay, I'm going to watch. watch him. I, that makes w- sense. Yeah, Wisconsin, 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 Wisconsin guy. He's guy. He's traditional <laughs> they, tight end. They disappoint me. Those Wisconsin guys. Every time they talk about blocking tight end, I'm like, oh, look at this guy. It's a big tackle out there. And, Guy gets in the league, he can't block. It's a pillow fight. No. Just play an offensive lineman at tight end. Don't worry mm. about all that. It worked well last year. Should have thrown it to Steele on that one play. He presented his numbers. He was in the middle of the field. He was open. He caught a touchdown pass. Yeah, it's but okay. in the playoff game, he and <laughs> they went double fullback, and both of them were open about eight yards downfield. I don't know why Dak didn't trust him. As long as we're going back to that, and so you've all answered the question, we've still got some time to kill. Hmm. Lyle Collins, guard? Depends. They, if if is that a thing? I'll if, tell you in May. If Philbin Th- stays thank around, you. appreciate Phil, that. You know what? To be honest with you, instead of going back to Connor Williams, they should have went ahead. If they really did believe that Steele was one of their best linemen, mm-hmm. they should have put Steele at right tackle and put Collins at guard. If they if they're going to keep it, going back to Connor Williams, might have been the bad play here. They might have been able to see what it looks like with Steele because they love Steele. They love the fact he comes in, he tries hard, he. You know, he works everything. He's a coach's pet kind of a guy, you know, really cares about the game. They love everything about him. Nobody says anything bad about him. They think he's their best, one of their best players, one of their best offensive linemen. So if that's the case, take Lyle Collins. They should have done that, at least to see what it looked like, because that's what this team might be in 2022. I wonder how much of that might be politics the politics of football i mean oh, one guy's on a let me tell you what the, the offensive line coach is best friends with the head coach so it, that carries a big stick it's like having bones fossil in your building you know mike i think we need to uh, sure whatever yeah Those sure damn special teams i'll tell you what you know what he you know he he survived the kicker situation you know it didn't kill you at the end and he found a pro bowl punter i mean give him credit for that and they yeah. were they were top Eight special teams unit this year too. Look at the Packers; they went home because of their special teams. Mm-hmm. You know, there's something to that. But if you're a coach on staff and you carry a big stick with the head coach, the Joe Philbins, those guys, there's always going to be a place for the guys that he wants his pet cats to play. Who's the next guy you're going to watch? 
Man, I mean, there, we've just there's. I've been very fortunate because I was just trying to do two or three a night, and now I'm past. I started with Dane Brugler's top fifty, and so now he had me watching a center last night from a well, actually a guard from a Memphis. Uh, that you know, it's really not. It was like a fourth round player, and uh, and I was just kind of parm fourth round. Yeah, parm. Yeah. It's too, It's January. You want to watch the heavy hitters in January. This guy was 285 pounds. He's a good player, but I mean, on the list, I'm just taking the list and kind of like you said, take people's list. I trust Dane a lot, but you know that guy's like a fourth round player. I, I'm hopeful that I need to, I need to get some of these linebackers done. I need to get some of the outside linebackers done. That's kind of the direction I'm going. Sneaky area of need. What about you, Kyle? Sneaky area of need? Yeah. Um, I'd probably say linebackers, too. That's where I'm at right now. I've kind of watched the the heavy hitters on the offensive side of the ball, and I'm kind of going through the defense. I started with safety and corner, and now I'm kind of at the linebacker spot, which is a little anti-conducive to what <laughs> to what uh, Brian was talking about in terms of the defensive line, yeah. I still haven't watched a ton of those guys. I've watched like the Leal. I, and I the, have overdone the edges. Right? <laughs> I, I, I haven't have, watched I have any. Over- there's guys. no. There's no overdoing. Like, again, like we're gonna be back, and I mean we're we're running out of time here, but we'll be back Thursday. And then two days a week until frickin' May. So yeah. you got you can't overdo it. No, fun. no, I'm That's just saying this. I'm it. looking at my board right now. You know, I've got. I mean, like I say, Thibodeau, Hutchinson, Karloftis, Walker, uh, Ajobu. You know, the, I mean, those. That's five edges that I have in the first round right there. And then not to mention Jermaine Johnson, Cam Thomas. By the way, you need to watch Cam Thomas from San Diego State. It's a good player. All right. Well, before that, we'll see him next week. Yeah. I, well, I was about to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got some homework for all of y'all. We'll be back Thursday, and it'll be the last time we do a show before the league descends on Mobile, I believe, for the Senior Bowl. We're going to talk about that. I want to hear about your pet cats on the Senior Bowl roster. We will do that Thursday. Thank you all so much for joining us. It's exciting. Maybe maybe still slightly disappointing, but uh, exciting to be back on this journey once again. Thanks for joining (laughs) Jeff with the power pose. Appreciate that. We will talk to you all Thursday. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!